Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirabbil alamin. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala abdi wa rasulihi nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in amma ba'd. The first point of today's lesson is the level of najasat, the level of impurities. So last week I said to remind me about the uh, different levels of najasat. There are three levels. Najasa, impurity in the Sharia, is three different levels. The first level is al Najasa al Mukhaffafa, is the light Najasa. Al Najasa al Mukhaffafa, light Najasa. And this is what the author Rahimahullah Ta'ala mentions here when he says, وَبَوْلُ الْغُلَامِ الصَّغِيرِ الَّذِي لَمْ يَأْكُلِ الطَّعَامِ شَهْلِ شَهْوَةٍ يَكْفِي فِيهِ النَّضْحِ كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يغسل من بول الجارية ويرش من بول الغلام رواه أبو داود والنسائين He says that this is the, this is the najasa this is the light najasa and that is the urine urine of a baby boy below the age of two a baby يعني below the age of two a boy as opposed to a female right the urine, so it's urine, not necessarily all of his najasa, it's urine specifically. The urine of this baby who's below the age of two and who's a boy, who does not eat food. Meaning, its main source of nutrients isn't food. Its main source of nutrients is what? Milk, right? Milk. <laughs> the, that urine is considered to be the lowest level of najasa, and it's considered to be najasa mukhaffafa. What does that mean? What's the significance of that? It means that the, that urine, you don't have to wash it off. You don't have to wash it off. You don't have to do ghusl, ghusl of it. You don't have to wash it off. What do you have to do? You have to do a nadh. You have to, uh, the minimum is that you sprinkle water over it. So that's what it means by mukhaffafa. Well, it's, it's light najasa. So the urine of a baby boy who's below the age of two and only, only drinks milk as its main source of nutrients, the way that you get rid of it is by sprinkling water over the area, making sure that the area where the, where the najasa is or where the urine is, is covered by <coughs> It's covered by water. Is that clear? Is that clear to everyone? طيب. The second level of najasa, we go to the top, which is al najasa al mughallada Heavy, the higher level of najasa. The heavier najasa. And that is, and according, according to the, uh, the, 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 the lot of scholars, it is, Najasa to kalbi wal khanzir. The najasa of a dog and a pig. The najasa of a dog and a pig. The impurity of a dog of a dog or a pig, like the licking of a dog, for example, needs to be washed uh, more because it's called najasa al mughallada. That's what that's why sorry, it's called najasa al mughallada, the heavy najasa, because the way it's washed is different. <coughs> it's washed by washing the, the najasa off seven times. Washing the najasa off seven times. One of them, one of those seven times with earth. One of those seven times you use earth. So you get soil, you put it on the najasa, and you wash it off seven times. Is that clear? That's because the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he said, إِذَا وَلَغَ الْكَلْبُ فِي إِنَاءِ أَحَدِكُمْ فَغْسِلُوهُ سَبْعَ وَعَفِّرُ الثَّامِنَةَ بِالتُّرَابِ Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if a, if, a, if a dog licks any one of your bowls, a dog licks a bowl, right? فَغْسِلُوهُ سَبْعًا وَشْءَ سَبْعًا تَيْمْزُ وَعَفِّرُ الثَّامِنَةَ بِالتُرَابِ In the eighth, do it with turab, with earth. طيب, that's why it's called najasa al-mughallada, heavy najasa. And obviously some scholars, like Imam al-Shafi'i and others, they also... Oh, sorry. Sorry, lorry drivers just uh, unfortunately accidentally hit a BMW RE73 MFX. So the owner of this car, if you want to come down, the lorry driver is there to exchange uh, details. Thank you. Now, the, the, the second level of Najasa, or the, 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 the last level of Najasa is Al Najasa Al Mutawasita, the middle level of Najasa. And that is Sa'iru Najasat, all other types of impurity. All other Najasa that we mentioned last lesson, right? You guys remember last lesson? We mentioned the different najasat. All other najasat come under this category. 
Why is it متوسطة in the middle level? Because you wash it off until what the author mentions here. He says وإذا زالت عين النجاسة طهر 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 المحل ولم يضر بقاء اللون والريح. The author رحمه الله تعالى says that when the najasa goes away, you have to wash it until the najasa goes away. Then after that, whatever is remaining in terms of smell that you can't remove and color that you can't remove, then that's overlooked. So if you've got some blood or some urine or any other najasa that we mentioned last lesson, you got it on your body or your clothes or the place that you're praying in, it's obligatory upon you to remove it until the actual najasa is gone, even if the stain remains. Is that clear? That is the way to remove the other najasa. لِقَوْلِهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ لِخَوْلَةَ فِي دَمِ الْحَيْضِ يَكْفِيكِ الْمَاءِ Because the Prophet صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ said to Khawla, uh, it's enough for you just to use water. وَلَا يَضُرُّكِ أَثَرَهُ And the athar, the remnants of the najasa, that's not going to harm you, even though this hadith is weak, but the, the meaning is correct. وَاللَّهُ أَعْلَمُ Is that clear, guys? That was the last mas'ala that we stopped last lesson that we didn't have enough time to finish. Any questions there? So then the author, rahimahullah, mm. Yeah. So the najasa of a dog or a pig, which is the liquid that comes from it, whether it's its sweat or whether it's um, whether it's the, the the saliva or the sweat or the urine of the dog or the pig, if it touches anything, you have to wash it off. Yeah, from your body, your clothes, or your place of prayer, or the bowl as well. And this is the opinion of a lot of scholars. You have to wash it off seven times. One of them with earth because of the hadith. Does that answer the question? In this chapter, he mentions how to do wudu. And it is, what is wudu? Uh, uh, wudu is one of the conditions of the salah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us in a hadith, Allah does not accept the salah of any one of you if you go into the state of hadith until you do wudu. <coughs> and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us the characteristic or the sifa how to do wudu in the Qur'an. And this ayah in Surah Al-Ma'idah, ayah number 6, is an ayah that everyone should memorize if they want to know the sifa of wudu properly. And that is when Allah says in the Qur'an, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, Iza qumtum ila salati faghsilu wujuhakum wa aidiyakum ila al-marafiqi, wa msahu bi ru'usikum wa arujulakum ila al-ka'bain. That's the end, that's the, that's the end of the part which speaks about wudu. Then after that it speaks about at tayammu Right? Babu Sifatil Wudu. So, how to do Wudu? <coughs> the author Rahimullah Ta'ala says the first step of Wudu and the first pillar is An Yanwi Araf Al Hadath. O will Wudu Lis Salati when Ahuiha. When Niya to Shartun Nijami Al Amal, Mintahara Tin Wagiriha. The first thing that you must do in Wudu is have the intention. That's the first pillar of Wudu, An Niya. Where is that in the ayah? In the ayah when Allah says, Ya you have Ladin Amen, O you have Iman. إِذَا قُمْتُمْ إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ When you intend to get up for the salah. Meaning, إِذَا نَوَيْتُمُ الْقِيَامَ لِلصَّلَاةِ When you intend to get up from the, to the salah, فَغْسِلُوا Then do this and that. He mentions how to do wudu. But the first, first part was what? النِيَّة The intention. So, it's not enough for a person to jump into a swimming pool without any... Come out and then he says, hold on, I could have just had wudu, right? I jumped into this ocean, I come out, I have wudu. No, you have to have had intention to do wudu. Is that clear? So it has to be an intention. And he says here, وَالنِّيَّةُ شَرْطٌ لِجَمِيعِ الْعَمَالِ Niyya, intention is a condition for all actions. مِنْ طَهَارَةٍ وَغَيْرِهَا Whether it's purification or other than purification. It's a condition for every action. And that's because of the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where he said, إِنَّمَا الْعَمَالُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ Actions are by intentions. And this is a principle in our sharia again. Remember last week we mentioned some of the five major principles, right? Do you guys remember that? Did we mention it here? Did we? Yeah. What, what was one of them? <laughs> How was one of them? Certainty can't be removed by doubt, right? I did mention it here. I'm just checking. I can't remember. 
So actions are by intentions are one of the, is also another one of the five major principles. Right? Actions are by intentions. Again, why is it one of the five major principles in our sharia? Ah? Because it goes into every single topic of fiqh. In salah, we use it. In zakah, we use it. In, يعني, if someone gives charity, and he gives, it, he gives charity at the time where his zakah is due, and it's the amount that it is due, and he gives it to a person that deserves zakah. Has he given zakah? Without, if, if, he's, if, he didn't have, if he had the intention of sadaqah, or just charity? Has he given zakah? He had the intention of sadaqah, charity. Has he given zakah? Even though it was the right amount, to the right person, at the right time. Has he given zakah? No, we say to him, go give zakah again. With the intention this time. Is that clear? Hajj, same thing. Everything. Someone goes around the, the Kaaba seven times looking for his child. He says, I've done seven times. That's tawaf. I've done my umrah. I've done part of my umrah. Has he done it? No, he hasn't. He has to have intention for ibadah, the act of worship. Same thing for wudu. Someone jumps into swimming pool, comes out, he says, okay, I've got wudu now. No, you have to have intention to do wudu. And yen we raf al hadith. You intend the wudu. <coughs> because Allah, now we mentioned the hadith, because of the, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّمَا الْعَمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِّ مْرِئِمْ مَا نَوَى Actions are by intentions, and a person only gets what they intended. Mutafakun alayhi, narrated by Bukhari Muslim. ثُمَّ يَقُولُ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ And then he says, بِسْمِ اللَّهِ The saying of بِسْمِ اللَّهِ before the wudu, what's the ruling on it? The hadith, all of the hadith narrated about saying Bismillah before the wudu, they're all weak. None of, the, none of them are authentic. This is why Imam Ahmad is narrated for him, like a Tirmidhi rahimahullah ta'ala mentions in his jami'ah, that Imam Ahmad rahimahullah ta'ala said that there is no laysa fil, fil hadithi or fi dhikri, fil, bis, fil basmalati. There is no hadith when it comes to the basmalati, hadithun jayyidun, or lahu isnadun jayyid. There is no uh, hadith mentioning, saying Bismillah, or commanding us to say Bismillah, sorry. Commanding us to say Bismillah with an authentic chain of narration. The most authentic one is the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which is narrated that he said, لا وضوء لمن لم يذكر اسم الله عليه There is no wudu for the one who does not mention the name of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala on it. And again, as we said, this hadith is also weak. Uh, so therefore, it is not obligatory. But it is sunnah to say Bismillah. So this one that he mentions here, it is, ثم يقول بسم الله سنة That it is sunnah. Obviously the author, what he means is what? He means obligatory. Because Ali Shaykh Abdul Rahman Nasr al Sa'di is Hanbali. And the, the Hanbalis, they believe saying Basmala, saying Bismillah is wajib, it's an obligation. So they say that if you miss it on purpose, then your wudu is invalid. You, on purpose, you remember to say Bismillah, but you don't say it. Your wudu is invalid. But if you, if you forget to do it, and you do your wudu, and you forget to say Bismillah, then your wudu is valid. That's the Hanbali opinion. Hmm? Yeah, if you're in the bathroom, same thing, you're not allowed to say Bismillah in the bathroom. So the person should go out, according to them, should go out and say Bismillah and then go do wudu. Right? Um, that is the opinion of a sheikh. That's what he's saying. But again, as we said, the other opinion of Imam Ahmed, and also the opinion of uh, the majority of the scholars, is that Bismillah is sunnah. Because of the hadith narrated by Al-Bayhaqi, that he said, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Tawadda'u Bismillah. Do wudu in the name of Allah. <clears throat> so therefore it's sunnah to say Bismillah, but there is no hadith that is authentic mentioning that it is a condition or a obligation or an obligation. Is that clear? Even though this is an opinion of many scholars, from amongst them being the author, from amongst them being the main mu'tamad madhab of Imam Ahmad rahimahullah ta'ala. <laughs> then he says, وَيَغْسِلُ كَفَيْهِ ثَلَاثًا And then you wash your two hands three times. Cafe is up to the wrist, the hands up to the wrist, washing the hands up to the wrist, washing it three times. And this is from the sunan of wudu. This is an, again a recommended act of wudu as well. This is an, a recommended act of wudu. Washing the hands three times before starting the wudu is recommended. Right? As for washing the hand later on, which we're going to mention, then it's a pillar. But washing the hands before starting the wudu is recommended. If, unless in one, in one situation, where is it obligatory for you to wash your hand? In, in the morning? I said, when you wake up, whether it's the morning or not. When you wake up from sleeping, when you wake up from sleeping. Some of the scholars, they say when you wake up from sleeping at night. But uh, others, they mention that it is when you wake up, whenever you wake up. And this is the opinion of Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala. That whenever you wake up. Why? 
Oh, sorry, no. Hmm. Is the opinion of Shepherd? Hmm. And double check that. And double check again. Um. Alai Hal, this is the opinion of, of a lot of scholars that washing the hands whenever you wake up, not just nighttime. Because others, they say, no, it's just nighttime. Al Imam Shafi'i, sah, yeah. Al Imam Shafi'i says, whenever you wake up. Whenever you wake up, whether it's nighttime or not. So whenever you wake up from sleep, it's obligatory upon you to wash your hands before you put, put your hands into the water. Okay? Obviously, there's a difference of opinion. I'll mention it just because I did mention Imam Shafi'i himself. That the opinion of Imam Shafi'i is that it's sunnah from when you sleep, when you wake up. And the opinion of Imam Ahmed is that it is obligatory when you wake up at night time. And another opinion of Imam Ahmed, and this is the one that is taken by a lot of my teachers, is that it is obligatory. This is the one, this is the one we're going with, yeah? We're going with this one. It is obligatory whenever you wake up, whether it's nighttime or not. So therefore, we say, it is obligatory for you to wash your hands whenever you wake up from a deep sleep. It's obligatory upon you to wash your hands from whenever you wake up from a deep sleep before putting your hands into water. You shouldn't put your hands into a bucket of water. So if I say I have a bucket of water, I shouldn't put my hands into it and take the water out to do wudu. Right? right? I shouldn't put it in and, and, and wash my hands with it. And this is an obligation, wallahu a'lam. Because of the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he said, إِذَا اسْتَيْقَضَ أَحَدُكُمْ مِنْ نَوْمِهِ فَلَا يَغْمِسْ يَدَهُ فِي الْإِنَاءِ حَتَّى يَغْسِلَهَا ثَلَاثًا فَإِنَّ أَحَدَكُمْ لَا يَدْرِي أَيْنَ بَاتَتْ يَدُهُ When one, one of you wake up, then do not dip your hands into the water until you wash it three times. Because one of you, you do not know where your hands been at night. That shows that, where, obviously that's why a lot of scholars, they say, it's just at night, because the hadith says at night, right? But, obviously the reasoning is the same, night or day, it's both sleep. So the scholars, they say, no, that was night time because majority of our sleep is at night time. So that's why the Prophet mentioned it at night time, as, as night time. But in reality, it is every sleep that breaks your wudu, every deep sleep, you should wash your hands. You have to wash your hands before you put your hands into the water. That is the obligation. As for here, he says, You wash your hands three times, then this is sunnah. This is recommended unless you woke up, unless you just woke up from sleep. Why? Because of the hadith of Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And also the hadith of <coughs> Zayd ibn Khalid radiallahu ta'ala anhu that they mention that when they were doing wudu akfa ala yadayhi bil inai they would take the container and they would pour they would pour the water onto their hands فغسلهما ثلاثا then they would wash it three times ثم أدخل يده في الإناء then Uthman radiallahu anhu would put his hand into the water after that so at the beginning what do you do? he would take the, the water bottle Pour it on his hands and then wash it. And then after that, he'll put his hands into the water. So therefore, it's sunnah for you to wash your hands before that. It's before you start, um, before you put your hands into the, into the, into the container or before you start wudu. طيب, then he says, is that clear guys? So it's obligatory when you wake up, sunnah any other time. Look at that kalam for that. Let's see. طيب, he says, وَيَغْسِلْ وَثُمَّ يَتَمَضْمَضُ وَيَسْتَنْشِقُ ثَلَاثًا بِثَلَاثِ غَرَفَاتٍ Then, you do madmada, walistinshaq, three times. Al madmada is to gurgle water into your mouth, to put water into your mouth and to move it around. Okay? Put water into your mouth, move it around, and then spit it out. Is that clear? Walistinshaq is to put water and to take it up into your nose, and al istinthar is to remove it. Is to remove it. Three, you do that three times. Water in your mouth and nose, three times. Bithalathi gharafatin with three handfuls of water. With three handfuls of water. Meaning you don't. The sunnah is for you to do your mouth and nose at the same time, one handful. Mouth and nose, then out. Mouth and nose, out. Mouth and nose, out. Three times, right? The other option is what? Mouth once, mouth twice, mouth three times. Nose once, nose. That's how, many, how many is that? That's six, right? That's six. That's the other option. And, wallahu alam, what is better is for you to do it uh, three times, right? Once, you have it in your hand and you do it with mouth and nose at the same time. You do it three times, that is better. And that's the exception from the principle in fiqh that we have, which is whatever an action generally, if it has more actions, then it is more rewardable. There's an interesting mas'ala in fiqh, a qa'ida fiqhiyya, from the qa'ida fiqhiyya, from the principles of fiqh, that an action, if it has more actions, then it is more rewardable, normally. So therefore, six technically should be more rewardable, right? Because it's more. But this is an exception to that rule, because we have hadith. 
Similar to that is what? An action that has less, less, something that has less action but more reward. The two sunnah of Fajr. The two sunnah of Fajr is better than Salatul Duha, even if you make it long. Hmm? Doing haram from the miqat is better than doing it from your house, even though you're going to be in haram for longer. And they mention a lot of different exceptions. Anyway, بثلاثي غرفات. What's the evidence? The hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he said, إذا توضأت فمضمض. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when you do wudu, then مضمض. Do مضمضة. يعني put the water in your mouth and split, spit it out. Uh, ويستنشق ثلاثا and the hadith of uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib and the hadith of Uthman and the hadith of Zayd ibn Khalid they all mentioned المضمض والاستنشاق. Put your mouth, water in your mouth and water in your nose and blowing it out. These are What's the ruling on this? According to the Hanbalis and according to the author, it is obligatory. It's a pillar of wudu. It's part of the face. Part of washing the face. That's according to him. ثم يغسل وجهه ثلاثا And then he washes his face three times. Then he washes his face three times. This is a pillar of wudu. So number four and number five are pillars of wudu. So so far, look, we got number one, intention is a pillar. Bismillah is what? Sunnah. According to the author, is what? No, no, according to the author here, Sheikh Abdurrahman Nasr Sa'di, and Hanbali Madhab, it is a wajib, obligatory. So it's not a pillar. What's the, what's the difference between a pillar and a, wa- a wajib? I mean, I mentioned it. Yeah, I said, Bismillah. If you, st- if, you, if you forget intention, is your wudu valid? If you forget Bismillah, is it valid? According to the author. Yes, it is. If you, if you leave it on purpose, you don't say Bismillah on purpose, is it valid? No, according to? According to the Sheikh, right? That's what wajib is. Wajib is, if you forget it, it's valid. But if you leave it on purpose, it's invalid. And the example of it is, Bismillah, in the, sal- in the wudu. Is that clear? Is that clear, guys? Shall I repeat for anyone? Repeat. Naam. Bismillah, Bismillah is wajib. What's the difference between wajib and rukun? Yani obligatory and pillar. What's the difference between them? Washing the face is a pillar. So if someone forgets to wash their face, is their wudu valid? No. If someone forgets to say Bismillah, which is wajib now, is, it, is their wudu valid? Yes, it is. If someone leaves Bismillah on purpose, is it valid? No. Just like if you leave your face. You get it? That's the difference between wajib and, and fard and, and a pillar. So the wajib here is what? Bismillah. If you leave it on purpose, your wudu is invalid. According to Sheikh. And if you leave it by accident, your wudu is valid. If you leave your face by accident, your wudu is invalid. Is that clear the difference? Is that clear? <laughs> mm. So now, so that's, uh, so number one intention is a pillar. Bismillah is wajib according to the author. Washing the hands is what? Sunnah, recommended three times. Unless, unless you're waking up, then it is wajib, obligatory. Thumma, number four is madmad wal istinshaq. And according to the author, it is what? Mm-mm. Pillar. Rukun is a pillar. Because it's part of the face. Madmad and istishaq, according to the author, is part of the face. Is that clear? Thumma yagsilu wajhahu thalathan, washing the face. What, what did we say about washing the face? Hmm? Pillar. It's a rukun. Meaning, what do we mean by pillar? If you miss it, it's invalid. That's what it means in the Sharia. If, if, if I say a pillar, what's a pillar of Hajj? Arafa. Therefore, if I miss Arafa, what's, what's my Hajj? Invalid. A pillar of Salah is Suratul Fatiha. Therefore, if you miss Suratul Fatiha, your Salah is invalid. What if you miss it by accident? Still invalid. Is that clear? Naam. So he says, Thumma yaghzil wajhahu thalaam. What's the face? What is the wajh? What is the face? They say, Ma tahsulu bihil muwajaha. Anything that you face someone with, right? That's, what, that's why it's called the face, because تَحْصُلُ بِهِ الْمُوَاجَهَةِ Right? What is it in the sharia? What do you have to wash? What do you have to wash? The whole head? No, no. The face is from the original hairline. The original hairline to the chin. The original hairline to the chin. And from ear to ear. All of that is the face. All of that must be washed. So it's not just this. It's not just this. What a lot of brothers they do. This was this part. No. All of it must be washed. The whole thing. Tayyip, what, what is washed? What is considered to be washing? What's washing? Washing is to move water from your hands. You got water in your hands and you move it. As opposed to what? Someone pours water in their hand, 
they throw it and they wipe their face. That's not washing. Washing, you get water on your hands and then you move it to your face. And it should drip off if there is enough. It should, it should drip off. No, no, we're going to talk about beard, inshallah ta'ala. But do you understand what washing is? Because you have to know what washing is to differentiate between it and wiping. What's the difference between wiping and washing? When you say you have to wipe your head, you wipe over your socks. What's the difference? Washing, you get the water and you move it to your face. Wiping, you get the water, you throw it, your hands are wet, you just wipe over it. So if someone gets water, throws it and does it to their face, what have they done? They've wiped their face. Therefore, is their wudu valid? No, it's invalid. Is that clear? That was the question, eh? Nah. The beard, now, what, what is the face? So it's from the original hairline. So original hairline, what do you mean by original hairline? If the hair, hair went back a bit, it doesn't, huh? You don't go all the way back. You just rush. The original hairline when you're young, right? Until the chin. And then the ear to ear. Now, we've got, a, we've, got a, we've got a situation now, we've got a beard. And on the, in that area, which I just, I just described, you've got a beard. So what do you do with that? They, they say, look, it depends. If your beard is thick, if your beard is thick, you don't have to wash it. I mean, you don't have to, sorry. No, let's say if your beard is thin. No. <coughs> if your beard is thin, then you have to make sure the water gets to the skin. What is, what do we mean by a beard is thin? It is that you can see the skin behind the beard. You can see the skin behind it. Unless, as opposed to a thick one, a thick beard is what? You can't see the skin behind it. It's a thick beard. So a thin beard, what do you have to do? You have to make sure the water gets to the skin by doing takhleel, by putting your fingers through the beard. Make sure it gets through the skin. As for if it's a thick beard, then it takes the place of the, of the face. So you just wash it as if it's the face. You just, you just wash over it. Is that clear? It is sunnah to put things through it. But when does it become obligatory to put your fingers through it? When it's a thin beard. If it's a thick beard, then it is sunnah recommended to put your fingers through it. Because of the hadith of Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma. Can Nabi sallallahu, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he would do wudu, yukhallilu bayn, yukhallilu lihiyatahu. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would do takhleel of his lihya. He would do takhleel, he would put his fingers through his beard. Therefore it's sunnah to do that. But it's obligatory upon you to wash it, or wash over it. Unless it's a thin beard, then in that case you have to put your fingers through it to make sure that it touches the skin. What's a thin beard? The one you can see your skin behind. Is that clear? طيب. Then he says, وَيَدَيْهِ إِلَى الْمِرْفَقِينِ ثَلَاثًا oh, Look, he said three times, right? Washing the face three times. Washing the face is a pillar. Three times is sunnah. One is the minimum. One is the minimum. So someone doesn't have enough water, you can wash it once, that's fine. Right? Thalathan is a sunnah, is the best. Three times. To do it three times. Every body part, three times. Apart from where you wipe. Then in that case, wiping is only once. We'll take that inshallah ta'ala. Then he says, وَيَدَيْهِ إِلَى الْمِرْفَقَيْنِ ثَلَاثًا The next one is, your hands up to your elbows three times. Your hands up to your elbows three times. That's because Allah said in the Quran, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِذَا قُمْتُمْ إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ فَغْزِلُوا وَجُوهَكُمْ وَأَيْدِيَكُمْ إِلَى الْمَرَافِقِ Wash your hands up to the marafiq, up to the elbows. إِلَى الْمِرْفَقَيْنِ يعني مع الْمِرْفَقَيْنِ Including the elbows. So it's from the, the, the fingertips all the way to the elbows. What's the mistake that someone, a lot of people, they do? A lot of people, they start with the, with the wrist up to the elbows. Because they say, well, I already washed my hands at the beginning. But the beginning was what? Sunnah. The beginning was recommended. This is a pillar now. Washing the hand here is a pillar. So you have to start from the fingertips all the way to the elbows and you have to include the elbows. You have to include the elbows. Because the Prophet sallallahu would go all the way up to the elbows. Wash your hands, including the elbows. Including the elbows. We know what washing is, right? We know what the hand is, right? What's the hand? What do you have to wash? From to? From your fingertips to your? Elbows. That is the pillar here. Has to, the one after the face. The one before at the beginning of wudu is just the, up to the wrist. Just the palms of the hand up to the wrist. The one after the face is from the palm all the way up to what? Up to the elbows, including the elbows. Thalath and three times again? Sunnah. Three times is sunnah. But doing it once is what? At least. Is a pillar. Not obligatory, a pillar. وَيَمْسَحُ رَأْسَهُ مِن مُقَدَّمِ The next one, number seven is وَيَمْسَحُ رَأْسَهُ مِن مُقَدَّمِ رَأْسِهِ إِلَىٰ قَفَاهُ بِيَدَيْهِ 
ثم يعيدهما إلى المحل الذي بدأ منه مرة واحدة. يزل ويمسح wiping the head. The next pillar is wiping the head. This is a pillar. Wiping the head. Right? Wiping the head. And wiping the head. Wipe, what's wiping? Is to have wet hands. مبلولة اليدين. Your hands are wet. And you do imrar. You, you run over it. You run over the area that you want to wipe. So your hands are wet and you just want run over the area. So when it comes to wiping, we wipe the hair. Um, we, wipe the, we wipe the head. That's the pillar. Wiping the head. He says, من مقدم رأسه from the beginning of your head all the way to the back. إلى قفاه until the back. That is the pillar. Doing it once. Then after that, when he says, ثم يعيدهما إلى المحل الذي بدأ منه مرة واحدة, then you go back up. That second time is sunnah. The second time is is sunnah because the minimum is what? What Allah said in the Quran, وَمْسَحُوا بِرُؤُوسِكُمْ Wipe your heads. Wipe your heads. And going back up is is sunnah. طيب, we know what wiping is. And then he says, مرة واحدة once. Did I mention to you guys the principle in the sharia when it comes to wiping? The principle in the sharia when it comes to wiping in wudu is that you only wipe once. المسح is always once. Where do you wipe in wudu? Your head. What else? Your socks. What else? Huh? Your imamah. If you're wearing a turban which is hard to remove. Someone's wearing a turban that's hard to remove. You're allowed to wipe over it. The ears. You wipe over your ears. You wipe in your ears, right? The khimar. For the woman who's wearing hijab. The khimar. She wipes over the khimar. She's allowed. According to the hanbali, it's allowed. You're allowed to wipe over the khimar. We have a hadith for that. There's a hadith mentioning uh, wiping over the... Oh, sorry, wiping over the turban. And the khimar is also allowed. Naam. The khimar is also allowed. What else do you wipe over? Khimar, the hijab. Yeah, and the headscarf. The headscarf. The khimar is a, head, is a headscarf. So the specific one that's wrapped over around the head. The jilbab is what's put on top and covers the rest of the body. Hmm? Taib. What else do you wipe? Last thing. The jabira. The, the bandage. If you got a bandage, you wipe over it once. All of these things that you wipe, how many times do you wipe over it? The principle in wudu is that you wipe over only one. Only how many times? Only one. That's why it says marratan wahida. Thumma, the next one, number eight, is thumma yudkhilu sabbahatayhi fi sumakhi udhunayhi wa yamsahu bi ibhamayhi zahirahuma. The next one is wiping the ears. The next part of the wudu, after you've done your head, you went back and forth, you do your ears. You do your ears. <laughs> And is it sunnah or not? Is it sunnah or not? Difference of opinion. But the safer opinion is to say that it's obligatory, is, is also a pillar. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith, narrated by Tirmidhi in his jami' al-udhunani min al-ras. The two ears are part of the, the head. And, and wiping the head is what? Wiping the head is an obligation. Wiping the head is an obligation. Uh, he said, fi sumakhi udhunayhi. You put your two index fingers. The sunnah of it is to put your two index fingers. Huh? In the the hole of your ear, the hole, yani the the hollow part. Not not all, all of it is allowed, right? But you put it inside the hollow part of your ear, if it's not too deep inside. And then your thumbs, you use them to wipe the outside of your ears. So the hollow part of the ears, and then you use your thumbs to wipe the outside of the ears. That's the sunnah. Is that clear? That is number eight. Then he says number nine is thumma. After you finish that, you You wash your feet including the, the two ankles three times. Because Allah said in the Quran, يعني, wash your feet in, until the, the ankles. So everything below the ankles, including the ankles, so the ankles and everything below it must be washed. The ankles and everything below it must be washed, even the hills. That's why when the, some of the companions, they were rushing to do wudu. The Prophet وسلم, shouted with his loudest voice. And written by Bukhari in his Sahih, he said, Destruction will be to the hills from the hellfire. Because you guys are rushing and you're not, wa- rushing your, you're not washing your hills properly. Make sure that you do it properly. The hellfire will touch it because you're not doing wudu properly. Right? So everything that is below the ankle needs to be, needs to be washed. هذا أكمل الوضوء الذي فعله النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. The Sheikh Abdurrahman says 
that this is the best wudu that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam done. This is the best. This is the perfect wudu. This is the perfect wudu. Well, then he mentions the minimum wudu. That's the perfect wudu, right? You say Bismillah. You start off, right? We wash in your hands. But the minimum is an yaghsila marratan wahida. Minimum is to do everything once. وَأَنْ يُرَتِّبَهَا عَلَى مَا ذَكَرَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى فِي قَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى And you do it in order, in the order that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Qur'an when Allah said, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَوْ you have iman إِذَا قُمْتُمْ إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ The minimum is what? This ayah. This ayah says when you intend to stand up for the salah. What's that? First pillar. Intention. فَغْسِلُوا وُجُوهَكُمْ Wash your face. That's the second pillar. Wash your face. وَأَيْدِيَكُمْ إِلَى الْمَرَافِقِ Wash your hands up to the elbows, including the elbows. وَامْسَحُوا بِرُؤُوسِكُمْ Wipe your heads. وَأَرْجُلَكُمْ إِلَى الْكَعْبَيْنِ And your feet until the ankles. What's number six? It has to be in that order. It has to be in that order. Right? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wash your face. Wash your hands. Wipe your, ears, your head and then wash your feet. What would be the norm if there was no, there was no purpose? There was no intended, something else that was intended. You would say, wash, 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 wipe. But what did Allah say? Wash your face. Wash, wipe, wash. You understand? Should be wash, 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 and then wipe. Why, why would you put it in different order? What was the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put this wiping between these washings? To show that the order is intended. The order is obligatory. You get that? You get that? Mm. Then he says, وَأَن لَا يَفْصِلَ بَيْنَهُمَا بِفَاصِلٍ طَوِيلٍ عُرْفًا بِحَيْثُ لَا يَنْبَنِي بَعْضَهُ لَا يَنْبَنِي بَعْضُهُ عَلَى بَعْضٍ وَكَذَا كُلُّ مَشْتُرِطَتْ لَهُ الْمُوَالَةِ He says, أَن لَا يَفْصِلَ بَيْنَهُمَا بِفَاصِلٍ Another, the, the last pillar, the last pillar that they, they mention is, the Hanbalis mention, is that you have to do it all بِالْمُوَالَةِ You have to do it without a, grip, a, a long gap. There should be no long gap in between the actions of wudu. What does that mean? Someone starts washing their face. Then they get a phone call. Hello? Talks for 10 minutes. What does he do? Does he start again? He has to start again, right? Right? He does. He has to start again. Why? Because it's been a long time. You haven't done wudu all in one go. So the pillar here is what? Doing wudu all in one go. You guys get that? Doing wudu all in one go. That's called muwala in Arabic. Al muwala. What does it mean to do it all in one go? Between each body part. Is it 5 minutes, 2 minutes, 30 seconds? What is it? We mentioned it last week, right? What was it? According to Urf. According to what you consider to be a long, a long period. That's why he says, بِفَاصِلٍ طَوِيلٍ عُرْفًا According to what you consider to be a long time. Someone's doing wudu, he looks at you, Wa alaykum salam, how are you doing? You okay? Alhamdulillah. Then he carry, does he carry on? He carries on. That's not, a long, that's not a long pause, right? But someone, he's doing wudu, doing his face, he gets a phone call. He, he talks on the phone for 10 minutes. That's a long pause. Therefore, there's no muwala. Therefore, you start wudu again. That's what it means by urfan. By urf. According to urf. And again, that's one of the five major principles, right? This is one of the five major principles in the sharia. So it says, certainty is not removed by doubt. Urf. Al urf muhakkama. Or al adam muhakkama. Ada urf is something that we use to make rulings. And the principle we took today? Al yaqeen. Oh, sorry, a niya, right? Actions are by intention. This is the third of the five major principles. Let's see if we get to another, another two. Fasulun fil masih al khufain. Then he mentions wiping over the socks. The issue of wiping over the socks is something that is known in our sharia, is known in our religion, and is narrated from over 70 of the companions of the Prophet wasallam. that this is an affirmed ruling in our sharia that we are allowed to wipe over the khuf we are allowed to wipe over the socks no one differed on that at all there was no difference of opinion amongst the scholars on this the only people who differed were who? the shia and the khawarij they were the only people who differed because they were uh, the shia what did they do? they wipe over their feet you, they wipe over their feet and if you, you're gonna, you'll see that if you see them they wipe over their feet and the khawarij they never used to believe in sunnah they, ne- they used to reject hadith the Khawarij reject hadith. That's what they're known for at the, back, at the time of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They used to reject the hadith, and they say that the wiping over the socks isn't in the Quran, and so they reject hadith. So they don't do it. As for Ahlul Sunnah, the people of Sunnah, 
by ijma, no difference of opinion. They all know that wiping over the socks is something that is in our legislation, in our sharia. That's why some of the scholars of Islam, they mention in the books of aqidah, the books that we talk about belief, not fiqh, they talk about belief, what you believe in. What ahlu sunnah, people of sunnah, what they believe in, they mention wiping over the socks there. Because they know that the only people who differed were who? The innovators. People who mis were misguided from the path of the Quran, the, the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were the khawarij and the Shia. Then Ahlul Sunnah amongst themselves differed on what? Certain conditions of wiping over the socks. Does it have to be leather? Does it have to not be, if it's not leather? And things like that. They differ on that. That's valid difference of opinion. But as for the asl, the actual legislation of wiping over the socks, there is no difference there. Then, but they just differ on certain rulings regarding it. Is that clear? في المسح على الخفين والجبيرة and also wiping over the, the bandage he says فإن كان عليه خفان ونحوهما مسح عليهما إن شاء if someone has two if someone's wearing socks then you are allowed to wipe over them you are allowed to wipe over them يوما وليلا للمقيم the first condition is that you have one day and night if you're a resident one day and night if you're a resident what does that mean? If you're resident, يعني, if you're not traveling, if you're not traveling, you have one day and night to wipe over the socks. Meaning, someone, they done wudu. One, they, they, they done wudu. They put on their socks. You're at home, you're not traveling. Meaning, when I say you're not traveling, what do you mean? What do you mean by that? Hmm? You're not traveling, no dirt? But what if you're, I think Reading's kind of small, huh? what about London, from North London to South London, is that travel? There's no difference of opinion on this one, on this one there's no difference of opinion, this one here. There is difference of opinion amongst, in terms of travel, but in the example I gave here, there's no difference of opinion, either yes or no. Are you a traveller from... Okay, look, from my house to Heathrow Airport, it takes me one hour and 40 minutes. Or actually, you know, it depends which house. North London, it's 40 minutes. If I'm in East London, one hour and 40 minutes sometimes. Depending on traffic. Am I a traveler? Why? When you're in the city, you're not a traveler. When you're in the city, no difference in opinion. You're not a traveler. Even if the city is big, right? Now, there's a difference of opinion of when I... When I leave my city, how far do I have to intend to go to be a traveler? Yani if I'm, I'm from L London, I'm coming to Reading, am I a traveler? Difference of opinion now. Nah. But we're not a traveler. We're not. Allahu alam. Not a traveler. London to, to Reading is not a traveler. It's not a travel. And to be honest, even then, is there, is, is there even a valid difference of opinion? Because some scholars, they say it goes back to Urf. Remember we said Urf, right? Customs. If we consider it to be a travel. But London to Reading, I don't think anyone considers that to be a travel. London to Reading? Yeah, do you pack your bags to go to Reading? No, you don't. Maybe if I'm going to Scotland, then yeah, there's diff no difference of opinion there. Scotland is definitely travel. Is that clear? So if I'm, a, if I'm resident, meaning I'm not a traveler. What's a traveler? Someone who leaves, write this down. Who's a, who's a musafir? What's a musafir in the sharia? Ah? The musafir who's allowed to break his fast. The musafir who's allowed to shorten his prayer. The sh musafir who's allowed to combine the prayer. The musafir who's allowed to wipe over his socks three days and three nights. Who is that? He is the one who leaves his city. He leaves his city. What do you mean by leaving the city? You leave the built up area of the city. How, when do I know I've left London? When do I know I've left Reading? When you start seeing the green stuff, right? You no longer see the, the, the buildings, you start seeing the green stuff now. You've left the building, buildings of the area. Is that clear? So, Mufaraqatul Bunyan. You've left the city. We know what that means. With the intention of traveling a distance of travel. We're in the intention of traveling to a destination. Yani, your destination is the distance of travel. What's the difference of travel? What is the distance of travel? Difference of opinion here. But wallahu alam, what the opinion that my teacher, some of my teachers they take, and this is the opinion of Imam Ahmad and Imam Shafi'i, even those other others will differ, is that the traveler is 48 miles. Your distance, your intention is 48 miles. Your intention is what? So you're intending to go to a destination that is 48 miles away from London. 48 miles away from Reading. يعني أربعة بورد أو 
16 فرسخا That's the uh, eight Arab, uh, old Arab, the, the Shara'i term in Sharia. We say uh, burud, four burud, or 16 farsakh. In modern day measurement is what? 48 miles. Approximately. So if it's 47, it's fine. 46, fine as well. So what is that again? You've left. Is your, you've, you, who's a traveler? Who's a musafir? Someone who's left his city with the intention of going to a destination of 48 miles or more. Then he's a traveler. When does he become a traveler? So if I leave London and I'm on the way, I'm not a traveler? Mm. When does he become a traveler? Huh? From his intention. Yani I'm, I'm in London. I'm intending to go to holiday tomorrow. I'm a traveler. Ah, come on, guys. You have to be daqiq. Fiqh is very, very, very precise. When you leave the city, that person becomes a traveler when he leaves the city. As soon as he does mufaraqa to bunyan, as soon as you leave the built-up areas, you're in the green part now, that's when you're a traveler. You're now a musafir, you can break your fast. Once you're in London, don't break your fast. We're Heathrow Airport, don't break your fast. Hmm? Don't break your fast at Heathrow Airport. When you get on the plane and the plane starts moving, then you break your fast. Not stop, it moves outside of London. Then you can break your fast. Is that clear? That's the musafir. He, that person, can wipe his socks for three days and three nights. Can wipe over his socks for three days and three nights. As for a muqim, someone who's resident in their city, then you're only allowed to wipe your socks over for how long? One day and one night. That and 24 hours or five daily prayers. Dhuhr to dhuhr. Asr to asr. Is that clear? From when? When does that timing start now? So a person, he does wudu. We're going to see the conditions, inshaAllah ta'ala. You do wudu. You wipe over your socks. I mean, you put on your socks. You put on your socks. As soon as you wipe over your socks, the timing starts. Um, as soon as you wipe over your socks, the timing starts. The 24 hours starts. Wiping over socks, the 24 hours starts. You can now break your wudu, wipe over. Break your wudu, wipe over. Break your wudu, do another wudu, break, wipe over. Another, for 24 hours, as much as you want. As long as you don't take off the socks. As long as your socks are on, you can break it. Do you will do break it, do you will do break it. And you can wipe off every single time. Once 24 hours is up, you have to take off your socks now. And then you have to wash it if you want to do wudu. Is that clear? Is that clear? Huh. Let's look at the other conditions. We'll, we'll become more clear, inshallah. He says, so one day and one night for the resident. And three days and three nights for the traveler. With the condition that you wore the socks whilst you had wudu. And if someone woke up in the morning, put on socks, they go, they want to do wudu, can they wipe over it? No. You have to have had wudu, you done wudu, you woke up in the morning, you done wudu, then you put on your socks. Then you broke it, now you can wipe over it. As long as you didn't take it off after you broke it. Right? Is that clear? So the, the important thing is here is that you wore your socks whilst you had wudu, full wudu. And if a person does wudu, is doing wudu, he does his right foot. And then he put on a sock. And then left foot, put on a sock. Is that correct? No. He has to finish his wudu fully. Then you can put on your socks anytime. As long as you have that wudu, you can put on your socks and you can wipe over them. One day and one night. That's what it means by بشرط أن يلبسهما على طهارة ولا يمسحهما إلا في الحدث الأصغر The next مسألة, he says that you only wipe over your socks in wudu, not ghusl. حدث الأصغر, minor حدث. Remember we spoke about حدث, right? First lesson. Remember, right? First lesson we spoke about حدث. Only in wudu, you're allowed to wipe over your socks. Ghusl, someone, they wake up, they're in the state of janaba. They had their socks on, alhamdulillah. But they're in the state of janaba. That person has to take off his socks to have a bath. Can't, you can't wipe over it for ghusl. Then he says, وَعَنْ أَنَسِ بِنْ مَالِكِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ Anas bin Malik narrates from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he said, إِذَا تَوَضَّأَ أَحَدُكُمْ If one of you do wudu, وَلَبِسَ خُفَّيْهِ And you wipe over your, and you're wearing your socks. فَلْيَمْسَحْ عَلَيْهِمَا Then wipe over them. وَلْيُصَلِّ فِيهِمَا And pray in them. وَلَا يَخْلَعْهُمَا إِنْ شَاءَ إِلَّا مِنْ جَنَابَ And don't, you don't have to take them off, except if it's janaba, then in that case you have to take it off to do ghusl. Narrated by Al-Hakim, وَصَحَّحَهُ and says authentic. He says, فَإِنْ كَانَ عَلَىٰ أَعْضَاءِ وُضُوئِهِ جَبِيرَةٌ نعم. So that is the masala of wiping over the socks. Wiping over the socks. Someone's socks versus foot 
Yeah, so it, it was, he didn't mention a lot of these things, so that's why I was going to stop now and mention the full conditions of wiping over the socks. Scholars, they say, wiping over the socks have, has conditions. Number one is that you wore them fi kamal tahara whilst you were fully pure, meaning you done wudu. Wudu with water. Yani you washed your feet with water in that wudu. That, that's what it means by ala tahara. Number two is that the socks, they must be socks that cover the whole foot, including the ankle. Therefore, can you wipe over ankle socks? No, because the ankle is not covered. Obviously, uh, what comes under this one is what about socks that have holes in it? Scholars, they say, uh, as Ibn Taymiyyah and others, they mention that even if it has some holes in it, it's fine. Because they're still considered to be socks, so it's fine. The condition is that as long as it covers the ankle, you can wipe over your socks, even if it has some holes in it. Sahaba, radiallahu anhum, they used to wipe over their socks. Number three, they say that the socks must be made from pure material. So it can't be socks made from pig leather or dog leather or anything like that. Impure najasim, impure material. Number four is that you wipe over it within the time. One day and one night for the resident and three days and three nights for the traveler, for the musafir. Now we mentioned those are the important things. The fifth one now, there's a difference of opinion. What socks do they have to be? Some of them they say it must be strong socks that you're able to walk in. Others they say it must be leather, leather socks. And Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, he takes the opinion that as long as there's something that is, it is considered to be socks, then you're allowed to wipe over them. As long as it's considered to be socks, you're allowed to wipe over them. Wallahu a'lam. Why? He looks at the illa, the reasoning why this ruling was allowed for us in our, in our religion. Why was this ruling allowed for us in our religion? To make it easy. And this is the fourth major principle. Fourth major principle. Ad-deen yusr Religion is easy. And again, it has examples everywhere. That's why it's called what, the five major principles. Because these examples are everywhere. The religion is easy. Tahara. If you can't do wudu, do tayammum. If it's hard, wipe over your socks. It is hard, wipe over your socks. Ad-deen yusr The religion is easy. So, does this now, this illa, this reasoning, does it apply for leather socks and normal socks? Cotton socks. Does it apply for it? It does. Because the same reasoning, taking off your socks and taking off your socks, same thing is hard, especially in winter. Therefore, we just wipe over it. Right? And wiping over cotton socks was narrated from uh, many companions, from amongst them being Ali ibn Abi Talib and others, that you're allowed to wipe over the cotton socks or other material other than leather. So that, that leather material is not necessarily a condition. Number six, the sixth condition, they say that the socks, they stay on. They're not socks that, you know, if you move, then, and you're just standing somewhere, and if you move, they're going to fall off. No, no. What socks, socks that stay in by itself. You don't have to. They, st they stay on by itself. When that happens now, you can wipe over your socks with those conditions. As long as, the example of it is what? Well. I, I woke up in the morning. I done wudu. I put on socks. These socks, they meet all of the conditions to be proper socks that I'm allowed to wipe over. They cover my ankle and everything. I put them on. After I've, done, I've just done wudu, I put them on. Tayyip. I go to work. Now I lose my wudu. I go to the, I use the bathroom. I lose my wudu. What can I do? I can do wudu. Start doing my wudu and wipe over my socks. You can wipe over, wipe over your socks. Then I pray salat al dhuhr with that. Then I break my wudu. I go salat al asr. I can wipe over my socks. I pray salat al asr. I take off my socks. Can I pray maghrib? You can. Why? I didn't break my wudu. I didn't break my wudu, I just took off my socks. I took off my socks. I prayed Salat al-Maghrib. I put on new socks. I lost my wudu. Did I put my socks on with wudu or not? You did, right? It was Maghrib. I, I, didn't, I didn't have socks on, I prayed Maghrib. And then I put on new socks. And I still had wudu. Right? I did. Right? Ever with me? Shall I repeat that? Okay. Can I wipe over them? Why? It doesn't fulfill one of the conditions. Which one? Hmm? But what, I didn't say that one of the conditions is the same socks. 
We'll look at the conditions and see which one doesn't feel. I have intention. I don't know for Allah. Yeah, but it's, it came off, put it back on. No problem. Hmm? Ish? Loose socks. No? Huh? Ahsent. I didn't put them on with full wudu. I put them on with wudu. I had wudu. But that wudu, was it from washing my feet or was it from wiping my feet? Wiping my socks? It was from wiping my socks. So therefore, if I have wudu, I've got wudu, I can pray. But that wudu was from wiping my socks. It wasn't from washing my feet. So therefore, when I put on these new socks, I can't wipe over them because the wudu that I had was from wiping. So what's the example again? I woke up in the morning. I done wudu. I put on my socks. So I done wudu, wash my feet, right? I put on my socks. I went and I prayed. I went to the Lord time. I, I went to the bathroom. I done wudu. I wiped over my socks. I prayed Dhuhr. I take off my socks now and I put on new socks without breaking my wudu. I still got wudu. Can I pray like that? Yes. I lose my wudu. I, I want to do wudu. Can I wipe over my socks? No, you can't. Why? Because you put on your socks with what? Tahara ghayr ma'i. The tahara that you done your feet with was, was, was not with water. It was not with water. It was with wiping. See the difference? It's important mas'ala. Fantabihu. So he says, فَإِنْ كَانَ عَلَىٰ أَعْضَاءِ وُضُوئِهِ جَبِيرَةٌ عَلَىٰ كَسْرٍ If now you're wearing another situation, you know, got charger, iPhone charger. My iPhone charger. Ask Muhammad in your car, inshallah. Jazakallah khairan. What time is it? Oh, it's an iPad. Allah. Naam. Okay. Another mas'ala which is wiping, it is wiping over a jabira, a bandage. Wiping over a, a bandage. Wiping over Jabira, again, is something that's allowed in our Sharia. Ah. Wiping over Jabira is allowed over in our Sharia. Ala kasrin. Aw dawa'un ala jurhin. Or I've got something on, my, on, on a part of the body that I have to do wudu. So on the arm. Obviously, if the bandage is on my shoulder, it's not going to affect my wudu, is it? It's only going to affect my ghusl. Wa yadurruhu al-ghuslu masahahu bilma'i fil hadath al-akbari wal-asghari hatta yabra. Then in that case, I'm allowed to wipe over it every time I do wudu. I've got a bandage on my arm. In that case, I wipe over it every time I do wudu. I wash what I can. So let's say my hand, let's say my hand is uncovered. I wash my hand and the rest of my arm up to the elbow, I just wipe over it. And that's, the, that's what we're allowed to do when it comes to the jabira. When it comes to the uh, jabira, the bandage, you're allowed to wipe over it as long as taking it off is going to harm you. Instead of taking it off, you just wipe over it and you wash what you can. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so if someone, now I'm the example of washing the, washing, the, washing the feet and wiping over the socks. If someone took their socks off and they had wudu, they broke the wudu and then they done a full wudu with, with washing their feet, then you can put on any socks, the old socks or new socks, and you can wipe over it because you washed your feet. So the question you have to ask yourself is what? This wudu that I have, did I wash my feet for it or did I wipe my socks for it? And that's what answers. Let's say the socks slightly fall off. That was the question you had earlier. I forgot that. Your socks slightly fall off. If they slightly fall off, the majority of the scholars, they say it's not valid. You can't, you can no longer wipe over it. If you lost your, if I lost my wudu, I, I, I lost my wudu, I wiped over my socks now. And then they slightly fall off now. Then in that case, I can't wipe over it according to the majority of the scholars. And others, they say it's allowed. I can say for maybe not to. Allah mm. alam. No, you don't have to immediately put your socks on. Do you have to, after you do wudu, do you have to immediately put your socks on? No. As long as you're in a state of wudu that you washed your feet with, yani the wudu that I have right now, I washed my feet with it. Then, anytime, even two hours later, put on socks. Is that clear? Tayyip, al jabira now wiping over the bandage. Wiping over the bandage in wudu is allowed, right? You just wipe over it, you wash what you can. And in ghusl, if you have to do ghusl, then you wash your whole body and you wipe over that part, which you can't. It's going to harm you if you're going to take off the... The bandage. It's going to harm you. Whether it's al-akbar or asghar. وَصِفَةُ الْمَسْحِ الْخُفَّيْنِ وَصِفَةُ مَسْحِ الْخُفَّيْنِ How do you wipe over the socks? أَنْ يَمْسَحَ أَكْثَرَ ظَاهِرِهِمَا That you wipe over the majority of it. So how do you do it? Hey, let's say my feet are under here. I, take, I, I, I get water which is wet and I wipe over the top of my feet. 
the majority of the top, all the way up to the ankle. The majority. So it doesn't have to be everywhere, but the majority of the top. So you get your hands and you open it a little slightly wide and you wipe over one time. You, 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 don't do, you can do right and then left first, no problem. But you do both feet at the same time, one time all the way up to the ankle. Is that clear? And that's because of the hadith of Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu when he said, radiallahu anhu, when he said, لو كان الدين بالرأي لكان أسفل الخفين أولى بالمسح من أعلاهما. If our religion was based on our opinions, then wiping the bottom of the sock would have more right than wiping over the top. But our religion is not by opinions. Someone says, okay, I'm going to wipe the bottom. Why? Because I walk with the bottom. Of my... That's where the dirt touches. So I'm going to wipe the bottom. We say, no, that's not the religion. The religion is not according to what you think. The religion is according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. So here in this, in this hadith, what Ali is saying, radiallahu anhu is saying, that wiping over is over the top. Then he says, وَأَمَّا الْجَبِيرَةِ فَيَمْسَحُ عَلَى جَمِيعِهَا As for the, 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 the bandage, then you wipe over all of it. The bandage or the cast, you wipe over all of it. If it's wudu, on the part where you're doing wudu on, and if it's on ghusl, then wherever it is, وَاللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَىٰ أَعْلَمْ Next lesson, inshallah, we will take نَوَاقِضُ الْوُضُوءُ The things that break the wudu. Um, we will take questions from here. وَاللَّهُ عَلَمْ وَصَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ نَبِينَ مُحَمَّدٍ وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين الحمد لله رب العالمين أحسن طيب if the bandage is put on without wudu a lot of the scholars like the Hanabi and the Shafi'i they say you wipe over it and then you repeat your salah at the end when you take it off but والله أعلم the other opinion which is seems to be stronger according to many of my teachers is that if you put the bandage on even without wudu you wipe over it and you don't repeat the salah Allah Now, is, is intention, are you allowed to have two intentions? It depends. In the example that you gave where if I'm fasting, I'm doing it for the sake of Allah, but also I'm getting the benefit of losing uh, dieting. Oh, you're doing tawaf and your, 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 your intention also, another intention, you're doing it for Allah, but I'm also doing it, so I'm, I'm, I'm walking in tawaf, I'm doing a lot of walking, then that is allowed, that's fine. As for another intention, you're doing it for, you're, you're, you have two intentions, you're, you're fasting Monday and Thursday, but you're also making up the fast that you made up, that you didn't do in Ramadan, that's also allowed. You're fasting in the first 10 days of the hijjah because the best days of the year, and you have the intention of, Making up the, the Ramadan, that's also allowed. You're praying two rak'ah in salah. Your intention is the tahiyyat al masjid, but also the two rak'ah of wudu. It's allowed. What's not allowed is intentions that you can't combine. For example, someone says that I am praying the two rak'ah before fajr, but my intention is also salat al fajr. Doesn't make sense. Can't do that. Hmm? What's also not allowed? And the shirk billahi azza wa jal is for a person to intend that I'm too in tawaf, but I'm also doing it for the people to praise me. Well, billah, that's showing off riyah and that's haram, me, minor shirk. Shirk billah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's the different levels of intention, it depends. Do it for people to praise you, shirk. Which doesn't take the person out of Islam. Any question? Huh? No, if you, with the, so the question is if I, uh, if, when it comes to wiping over the socks, do, when I made the wudu, do I have to have the intention that I'm going to put on socks? No, you don't have to. You don't wudu, khalas. then you decide to put on socks, that's fine. Yeah. So if you, if you can, yeah. if you can wash your feet, is it better for you to wipe over your socks or is it better to, to take off your socks and wash your feet? The scholars, they differ on this issue and some of them, they say, it's better for you to wipe your socks. And that's because of the hadith uh, of, uh, of uh, Al-Mughir ibn Shu'bah that he said, The Prophet وسلم, don't wudu. Then I went to take off his, his socks and the Prophet وسلم, said to me, Leave my socks. Because I put them on whilst I had wudu. Therefore, it's better to wipe over. And this is the opinion of the Hamid. Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah ta'ala, as he goes to a different opinion, he says that it depends, whatever your situation. If you're wearing socks, don't take them off. And if you're, if, you got, if you're not wearing socks, don't put on socks just to wipe them. That's better. But you're allowed to do both. You're allowed to do both. 
If I'm putting on, if I'm wearing socks, I can take off and wash my feet. If I've got wudu and I want to do, and I'm, I know I'm going to go to the bathroom, but I don't want to wash my feet, I'm allowed to put on socks, go to the bathroom and wipe over it. I'm allowed. But what's better? Good question. What's better? We say, Wallahu alam, whatever you, are, however you are, don't put on socks just to wipe over it, and don't take off your socks just to wash it. Wallahu alam. So Ibn Taymiyyah says, that's better. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Now, when it comes to putting water up to the nose, do you have to wash it with your fingers? No, you don't wash it with your fingers. You just put, you just breathe up, breathe in the water up to your nose, and then you take it out. Yes, as you said, you put it in with your right, and you take it out with your left. That's sunnah. It's recommended. That's recommended. It's not, you don't, it's not obligatory. Mm. Um, do you have to put your hand, your, 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 the water in your, hand, in your palms and then let it wash down to the, go, trickle down to the elbow? You're allowed to do that and you're allowed to put it over the tap. Both is fine. Both is fine. Should you wipe the neck? No. Wiping the neck is not sunnah. And it's not narrated from the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Even though some scholars, they take it. Lakin, wallahu alam, there's no hadith for it. There's no authentic hadith for it. So it's, it's closer to bid'ah than sunnah. Wallahu alam. Now, when you're washing the feet, is it compulsory to, uh, to use your fingers to, between each toes? It is sunnah. It's recommended to do that. Narrated by Imam Malik in his muatta, that he said that uh, the, the Prophet وسلم, he would use his khinsar, his pinky finger, to go in between his toes. So that's sunnah. It's recommended. But it's not obligatory, so sunnah is good. If a, if a sister uh, break, break, she does wudu at home and then she breaks it while she's out, she has to do wudu. She, she has to wash her hands, wash her face, uh, and all of that. But obviously, she can wipe over her khimar. She's wearing the hijab, right? So she can wipe over it. And also, the socks, she can wipe over it if she, if she, if she meets the conditions. Uh, so she's allowed to. No. Uh, doing ghusl, having a shower, it depends. If it's from janaba, if your ghusl, you woke up in the morning, you're in the state of janaba, for example, then in that case, your ghusl is enough. You can test wudu for you. Your ghusl, because you're removing major hadith, you also remove minor hadith, so you have wudu. But if it's just a normal shower, wasn't from janaba or anything like that, then you have to do, you have to have the intention and do wudu. Wallahu alam. So what's the difference between pillar and wajib? Pillar is something that if you leave it forgetfully or not, it's invalid. The wajib is if you leave it intentionally, it's invalid. And if you leave it by accident, it's valid. Like saying bismillah and wudu, like the first tashahud. Allahu alam. At the back there. The dua after the wudu is narrated in Tirmidhi in his jamr that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would say, أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أن أصوص أدد اللهم جعلني من التوابين وجعلني من المتطهرين. Some scholars say that part is weak, لكن it's it's allowed. الله أعلم. Same thing as the question of the sister. If you do, if you wake up for for Jum'ah, uh, you're going to Jum'ah and you do ghusl, you do ghusl for Jum'ah, then it depends. If it's in the state of Janaba, then it's enough for your wudu. And if you're not in the state of Janaba, so it's not a wajib ghusl, you're not in the state of Janaba, then in that case you have to also do wudu with it. Wallahu alam. Yeah, if you do wudu within the ghusl, then that's fine, you have wudu as long as you intended it. You have to wash your arms. Whether you take it off or not, you can roll it up. I'm wearing a thermal. You can roll it, wash it up. You don't have to take it off. <laughs> That's a bit long. Like in, you have to wash your all the. You can't wipe over it. You have to wash it. You have to wash it. Whether you take it off. If you have to take it off, that's the last option. Like I wouldn't recommend that be the first option. No.
Can a woman lead other women in prayer? Uh, yes, a woman can lead other women in prayer, but they don't stand in front of them. The women, they stand in the same row. So the one who's leading stands in the middle. They stand together. And the next row, next row, next row. But they don't stand in front. Allah right. Naam. So shoes. Do, if you, can you wipe over the shoes? If the shoes cover the ankle, then you can. And if they don't cover the ankle, you can't. You can wipe your shoes if they cover the ankle. Same condition. If they don't, then you can't. So do you have to rub the skin in wudu? Do you have to rub the skin in wudu? No, you don't. It's sunnah. Rubbing the skin in wudu is sunnah. So if someone just takes put water on their face without doing dilk, then it's fine. Sunnah. If someone puts, as long as it goes on the face, from the hands, from the hands, it's fine. Rubbing it is sunnah in ghusl and wudu. Yeah, it's fine. If someone can use a shower hose to, you can pour the water over the body part. That's fine. Sisters with long hair, how do they wipe? They wipe the head. So they don't have to go all the way down to the bottom of the hair. They wipe the head and they go down from the top. It, mm -hmm. Is there a difference of opinion? Yes, there's a difference of opinion of if you, if you, if you, if you leave the town that you reside in, uh, that you can shorten the prayer. Some scholars, they say if you leave and your, dis your destination is according to Uruf, you're a traveler, then you're a traveler. They don't put a limit to it. There is a different opinion, yes. Ah, a good question. No, no. If you're wiping over two socks, if you're wiping over, if you got two socks, then you wipe over the thicker one. Right? So if you got thick sock and then on top of that thin sock, what do you do? You take off the thin sock and you wipe over it. If you got a thin sock and then on top of it you got a thicker sock, what do you do? Just wipe over it straight. If they're both the same, then you wipe over it, of course. So the same. Is that clear? That's an important question. Barakallah feekum. Allahu alam. And then, last two questions? Uh, Ibn Taymiyyah's opinions that he's alone in, the Khan has opinions in the madhab, it depends. If they are takhreej, yani it's based on the principles of Imam Ahmad, then it's, it's considered to be um, a part of the madhab because he is one of the uh, scholars of the madhab. And if it is from a riwayah of Imam Ahmed, meaning it's narrated from Imam Ahmed, but the scholars of the Hanbali madhab didn't take that as the main opinion, then it's also considered to be a riwayah in the madhab. But if you went out of that, he went completely out of the, out of the soul and out of the, then Allah alam if that even occurs. And I'm not an expert of the Hanbali madhab, I don't know. Allah alam. Can you play with gloves on? Yeah, you can play, pray with gloves on, just not wudu. You have to wash your hands. But yeah, you can pray with gloves on. Huh? Now, qasr, shortening the prayer as a traveler, is sunnah. Sunnah, and it's an emphasized sunnah. It's an emphasized sunnah. Except in what situation? Number one, you don't shorten your prayer if you're praying behind someone who is... Praying full. So if the Imam is praying full, you don't stop halfway. You pray, you pray to you. No. By ijma. The Munzir says, by ijma, you don't do that. Rather, you pray. And Ibn Abbas said, this is the sunnah that you pray with the Imam for. for. Other than that, it's sunnah for you to pray qasr if you're a traveler. The Imam is doing qasr, yeah. So if the Imam is doing qasr and you're a resident behind the Imam, he prays too. And then when he says salam, you get up and you do your two. Allah It's narrated from Ibn Umar that he done that. Allahu alam. If you're joining on the third rak'ah, and the Imam is doing four, and you're a traveler, you do four as well. Even if you join in the last tahshahud. Even the Imam is about to say salam, and you join, you do four.
Yeah? Because you're praying behind a muqim. You're praying behind someone who's a, who's a resident. So you do, you pray full as well. Allahu alam. Sallallahu ala nabina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahabihi jma'in. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin.